got ourselves a 2021 Volvo VNL 760. And after three months, we finally got the steer axle in. So one of the things that we're gonna do in this video is we're going to uh, do a front axle swap. But what we're all gonna be looking at is when we put it on the front end alignment machine and see where the camber is on a brand new steer axle. So without further ado, let's get this thing going. I usually drag it up in the front. Uh, if I'm doing an axle, uh, I'll either jack it up here or I will put stands, which I'm going to put stands back here in the back, uh, just so that way we got some safety. Please don't jack these things up without stands, you know, don't ever get under a truck like this without jack stands. Then we're going to take the tires out. This is a, uh, 33 millimeter socket. It's inch and five, six tanks for us standard American boys, you know what I mean? All right, so then we get to use the old, uh, three quarter inch breaker bar here, because now this is gonna be an inch and a sixteenth or 27 millimeter, I believe. So here we go. All right, so I use a breaker bar for most of this stuff because a lot of these bolts are pretty high torquing and I don't feel like running the air hose and I try to keep the uh, stress off the impacts too. So you just go ahead and use the breaker bar to take this stuff loose most of the time. This cab unscrews, so we're gonna go ahead and unscrew it. This cab normally torques about 120 foot pounds. The things I do is just uh, leave the grease surface in it. Chances are you're not gonna have a socket. Just kind of tap it around with a hammer. Bang! Bottom one's a three quarter. Just turn that bad boy. Procedures better just hit it right here on the side, and most of the time it'll pop out. The thing about Valvo's is the bearing itself is what carries the load. So you, your slack is in your bearing up top here. Now you need a little bit of slack, but underneath here you can put you can put shims in. I'll explain now and go back together with this. So. Alright, so one of the reasons why we uh, cut these bolts off most of the time is after they've been sitting in the axle for a long period of time, sometimes they're really hard to get out, they get rusted in, and so there's no point in beating up your air impacts, your electric impacts, try and sit here and loosen the nuts off. Now occasionally there are cases where you can just go ahead and loosen the nut off, but in all reality, if it's been there for a long period of time, there's no point in doing that. And it's always a good idea to go ahead and change U-bolts when you loosen them because most of the time they are torqued to yield 
or torque to the point to where they actually stretch the bolt. So once you stretch it over and over again, you actually lose the tensile strength of the bolt. So I hope that answers a few questions. But we'll get this axle put up here when you put your wedges in. You always want to make sure you put your wider edge to the back so you have positive caster. If you don't have positive caster, it'll drive like a uh, part of the bad wheel. Alright, so once you get your uh, sway bar up, you just want to go ahead and snug them down just tight. Not super tight, man. You're not torquing them yet. We're going to torque them on a front end machine after we get it over there. So you're just going to put the U-bolts in, run the nuts up, get it to where it's not going to come apart, and then go ahead and start putting your stuff back together. Uh, we just use a little half inch electric, it's fine. Here, it's longer. Why? Because of the sway bar. So, this bolt back here is shorter than the front bolt. Now, most of the time it's the other way around. This is usually the uh, long bolt and shorter one goes to the front. But with the uh, sway bar on the front of this, uh, we're going to have to go the other direction. So this is your number uh, for if you have the uh, front U-bolt if you have a uh, sway bar. Alright, so that's how you put an axle and just throw everything back on the exact way you took it off. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Goes on a whole lot different than it came All off. Alright, so new knuckle going on. Gonna make sure you clean off the uh, paint and access on top of here. We don't want that seal rubbing against that paint and stuff. We'll probably chew it up. Now this, this OEM Kingpin. It's not OE, it's not Kaiser's Demco, this is OEM. Okay? Here's your part number. Right there. We're gonna install our uh, rubber seal right here. This is your bottom bushing. Okay, now the BNLs and most of your heavier trucks have these. A lot of your uh, VNRs and stuff like that have brass, so it all depends on which one you have and which one you get. So no ream. So this goes in the bottom. The reason why this is in the bottom and it's plastic is because there's not a whole lot of pressure on this. Most of your pressure stays right here on your bearing. In the top right here, okay? That's where your slack comes from. And your shims, they go underneath, in here, underneath the race, okay? The bad thing is, is you have to put this on, you have to set your bearing, you have to fork it down, and then you have to check your play, and if you have play, then you have to take it loose, pull your uh, race out and bearing out, and then shim it. Now, give me a little DA sanding going on here. We'll, we'll just go ahead and put that on. There's a little shoulder on here, right here. I'm gonna put it in just like this from the bottom up. All right, cool thing, we're gonna take this, we're gonna tap it in. Be gentle, don't break it, they break easy. Uh, this is a uh, Matco driver set, it has a uh, air hammer attachment, but I don't know the part number offhand, but I will post it. Clean it up nice and clean, get her all picked up, put her on there. Go ahead and stick the pin up to the bottom. I'm gonna jack it up. I'm gonna use any shim, we're just going to, uh, just showing you how they go in there. We're gonna put the race in there, we're gonna get a little grease, put a grease in there, we're gonna get some uh, grease on our hand, we're gonna pack this bearing yeah, up nice and greasy, and we're gonna put it in there. We're gonna tap it down just a little bit, you're gonna take your socket or something to go ahead and tap that down into the seat all the way. Be gentle, it is a plastic cage on there. Then you're gonna jack it up, you're gonna come over here, you're gonna get your hammer, you're gonna hit the axle so that we seat that pin. And then we're gonna torque this to 250 and then to 600 and make sure it moves. Okay, so once you get this torqued down, you have to make sure that this bearing underneath here, and this should be free. And it should be free like this, just smooth, real smooth. Okay? Okay, so once you get all this on, we're going to go ahead and put everything back together. We're going to tie rod assembly on, torque it down, make sure you bend your keeper over. Uh, we're going to jump to the other side, get it knocked out, torque it to 600 as well. We're going to go ahead and put our steer on back on. These bolts should torque to about 350. Make sure you put Loctite on them. 
Another thing, uh, make sure you grease this. Uh, we usually grease them from the beginning off the ground uh, until the grease comes out. Um, that's the main thing there. Go ahead and put your other side of the tie rod assembly on. We're not going to tighten this tie rod assembly up. We're going to leave it loose. Uh, it hadn't been set yet, so we'll set that when we set the toe on the machine, uh, which I'll show you at the end of this video. Uh, near the end of this video, you also see that the camber, uh, was how the camber came out. These bolts here, we can put Loctite on these bolts as well. We'll go ahead and run them down. They should torque to about 300, I believe. Um, so, and it's always good to torque these bolts to specified torque. I'll just run them down. Okay, so here we go. We're going to put our hub on our new spindle. I got that on. That nut torques to 350. Go ahead and put our cap on. Make sure you clean that surface. So this video started getting a little long, so I went ahead and shorted it up. We just throw our brakes on. We'll go ahead and speed this thing up and get closer to the end here. I'll have to make different videos on how to do these brakes and all that stuff because of how long this video got. But we'll also have to do a video on doing run out. We'll go ahead and throw this tire on, get this thing on the front end machine, see what this axle looks like. All right, so new axle. Got all that going. All right, so we... Have a brand new steer axle. This is part two. Uh, first thing we gotta do, we changed out the tie rod assembly, so we're gonna go ahead and set the toe first. We're gonna go ahead and get this right here. Lines up. Now, now, see that? Didn't line up. So now. There we go. All right, get that. All right, so one of the things I do is uh, when I do a tie rod assembly job, I usually put the tie rod assembly on and leave it loose. Uh, I tighten up the main uh, connecting points for the tie rod ends, but I leave the uh, tube assembly loose so that way uh, I can set the toe before we take all our, our first readings because uh, setting the toe uh, can affect the, uh, if it's way off, it can affect uh, the camber readings. Pick, continue. The things we're gonna do is we're gonna tow our hand. All right, so we got our toe somewhat set with the machine. Before you show you with the readings, we're going to go ahead and uh, set the toe with the old uh, manual gauge. So, you set this side on the line, put the edge of that on the line. Set this side on that line. Double check this one. Good. Get out of this side. Get on that side. No, right there. And move the light. There you go. About sixteenth of an inch. So we're pretty straight right there. It's towed in a sixteenth. So the question is, brand new OEM steer axle from the factory, never been on a truck. What does the camber reading look like? Well, let's find out. This side, negative one eight. Not bad. Negative quarter. Hmm. That's gonna be a problem. So what happens when you load the truck? This side's gonna go more negative with the applied weight. Well, I guess there's nothing we can do. Set the toe and let it go. Wrong. I'm gonna pull it on over here and uh, we're gonna straighten this bad boy out. So stay tuned and let's uh, we'll show you how we do that. You know it's not illegal. 